Welcome in episode 2. So today we're going to see how to add some project settings and we're going to implement this uh, not project, work on project setting but we're going to add some action mapping to our project setting to be able to use that in our first person tracker. So here that's the original map. I just removed the uh, the gray block that were a little bit everywhere just to have more space. Um, so I'm going to go to the project setting here and under the input here I'm going to add a few action mappings that we're going to need later. So the first action mapping that I'm adding here would be fire so when we press left mouse button. So if you click right here uh, you'll be able to select directly the key that you want instead of going down the menu here and searching. I'm going to add another one that will be for reloading. So when we reload our weapon, so I'm going to place R, I'm going to add another one for sprint. So when we sprint, it's going to be left shift on the keyboard. So we're going to start with those three here. And we're going to come back here later to add more because there is way more to add. But I'm not going to add the other one. Uh, at this time. So I'm going to go to the first person character so you can find your first person character under first person character here blueprint and it's right here. So here we're going to add the weapon that we're going to have in our hand. We are not going to attach the weapon here directly because we're going to use uh, the event graph to do this. However, we're going to set up it right now. So we're going to click add and we're going to use a static mesh, right? So you can use a static mesh, but as we're going to use the uh, pack that we downloaded earlier, so the military weapon pack, they use skeleton mesh. So what we're going to do here, we're just going to click add and we're going to add a skeleton mesh. And we're going to make sure that the skeleton mesh is under our hand here. So, and I'm going to rename that by clicking F2. I'm going to call that Skeleton Mesh Weapon. And I'm going to compile. So, when you compile here, if you don't want to save right after, you can always click on those three dots. And you can select on success or always when you click compile. So, it's saving you an extra step of pressing here. So now having that skeleton uh, weapon here, we need to add a socket to our first person arm here so we can hold that weapon in those hands. So let's do that. So when you have your first person mesh selected, you can click here and you have the skeleton mesh. And if you click on the folder here, it's gonna bring you directly in your content browser where the skeleton is for those arms. So just double click on that to open it. And when you're here, we're gonna take a preview and we're gonna take the fire, first person fire preview. We're just gonna drag that red bar here so it stopped moving for us. And we're gonna select the right hand here. So we're just gonna search for hand and we're going to take this one here. And with this selected, we're just going to right click and add a socket. And we're going to click F2 just to rename that. And we're going to call that weapon underscore grip. So now I have a socket attached to this end. However, I don't know exactly in which direction the weapon would face. So to give us a hand with this, if you right click on the weapon grip, you can add a preview asset. And I'm going to select the first one here, which is our assault rifle. I'm going to click the assault rifle. And with this, we have to select the socket we just did. So now it's gone. So we're just going to click here and search for weapon. And the socket is right back here. So we're just going to rotate the weapon so that it's facing the right direction there you go 
sounds good like this. So just be aware that the animation for that first person character and the weapon has not been made to work together perfectly, right? So you're gonna have some gaps here and things like this, right? So just keep that in mind. I'm gonna probably change the animation later, but just for now, having the gun attach here to our end, it will be a good start. So now we do have the weapon here. We're gonna just save that and we can close this. We're not gonna use it anymore. So here we have the event graph. So if we click on the event graph, you should have something similar like this, all the basic functionality of the event graph. Um, so here, as you probably remember, we implemented a few things. We did some action mapping, firing, reload, and sprint. So here, if you want to add those action here, you can just left click, I mean right click and search for fire and you have the action event that we created. So if you click on this, it's gonna appear here. So with this, we're all good. So we're not gonna do the fire logic now, but it's there just to show you that it's how you implement something from your project setting for your firing to the event graph right here. So in the next episode, we're going to see how to implement the health of our character and probably the sprint as well. And we're going to be able to try this out. So I'll see you in the next one.